Hi everybody, welcome to our State 4-H Facebook page and YouTube channel. I'm Dan Jennings with the University of Illinois State 4-H Livestock Specialist and I'll be joined shortly by Jonna Jennings, the 4-H Youth Educator for Boone DeKalb in Ogle County. Um, and we're here to talk to you today about our embryology project. Um, welcome to our, our, our channel and our project here, first of all. Um, the, the Embryology Project is one of our largest outreach efforts we have in our 4-H program and it, uh, we reach about a thousand teachers every year in classrooms and that correlates to uh, over 20,000 students. So um, with the recent outbreak of, of the COVID-19 uh, virus and with schools uh, shutting down and doing distance learning with kids at home, um, our, this program was halted as well. We got through maybe 15 or 20 percent of it. So we thought we'd come to you kind of alive from our basement uh, at home with incubators and eggs and take you through the project kind of from beginning um, to the end. And what does that mean? That means we'll be talking about um, things like uh, incubator setup, um, we'll be candling eggs, we'll be putting things on the uh, face, or the page for activities that you can do and, and fact sheets and incubator uh, and brooder setup um, as well as uh, getting a, a live webcam when it comes time for those chicks to, to start hatching. So um, that could be kind of exciting. We're going to try to do this uh, bi-weekly or twice per week um, and post things up there. So uh, hopefully you, you'll like um, and share the page so um, teachers and other students can enjoy it as well. Um, so first of all, we're going to start the process off with uh, kind of incubator setup and what we're doing. And when we're incubating eggs, we're actually trying to mimic uh, what that live hen, that female chicken, is doing with those eggs. It looks like she's just sitting there, um, but there's a lot of things and a lot of science actually going on at the time. Things like trying to maintain a, a perfect temperature of, of 99 or 100 degrees in that incubator, relative humidity, um, even the movement of those eggs. So uh, with that, I'll ask uh, John to kind of start um, kick off the, the incubator setup and loading of the eggs and with some other information um, and this week yet hopefully we can come back to you with uh, some more video footage of um, how that's progressing. Hi, my name is Jonna Jennings. I'm 4-H Youth Development Educator for the University of Illinois Extension and I cover Boone DeKalb and Ogle Counties. Today I'm here to talk to you about chick embryology and incubation. Um, with the remote learning taking place a lot in our community, I decided that what better way to do this than to actually bring it to you from my home and for you to understand a little bit about the incubation embryology process. So first of all, incubation embryology will take 21 days for baby chicks. So we're looking at chickens, not, any, not ducks or anything else. So some of those other birds will take a little longer or shorter period of time. But in our case, we're looking at chickens. So for 21 days, we're gonna make sure that we have certain things happening in our incubation embryology process. First of all, we're gonna use an incubator. We're not gonna use a mother hen because the mother hen right now would not be very happy in our house. And for school purposes, it's much easier to use an incubator than a mother hen. So we all have discovered that there are a variety of different kinds of incubators out on the market. For my purpose and for what my preferences, I like to use these kind of incubators. Uh, this is actually a hovabator. But the purpose of, uh, the reason why I like these, it has a nice big open window and also it has um, a variety of other perks in it that we'll talk about in a little bit. Uh, what you're going to notice is that most all of the incubators are made out of styrofoam. Um, so when you're looking on the market, don't be surprised, don't be looking just for a styrofoam one, but there are a variety of different kinds of things to consider when you're looking at an incubator. The reason they're made out of styrofoam is that styrofoam is an insulator. In other words, it keeps things warm on the inside. So if you think about going to a soccer game or a football game, and you go to the concession stand and you get a hot cocoa or a coffee, you'll know often sometimes they're served that in a styrofoam cup. And the purpose for that is that styrofoam cup keeps the warm drink hot and keeps your hands from getting burnt on the outside. Same thing's going to happen with our incubator here. I can touch the outside of it, but it's going to be keeping whatever I want inside nice and warm based on what's going on uh, with our temperature regulation. So one of the first things we're going to make sure that we have going on in our incubator is there are four main principles that need to take place. The first one is temperature. 
we want to make sure that our incubator is at a perfect temperature for all 21 degrees, 21 days, excuse me. And that perfect temperature is going to be 100 degrees. Oftentimes our incubators may say 99.5, but it's really hard to read a 0.5 on a thermometer sometimes. So in our case, we're going to say our perfect temperature is going to be 100 degrees. Now we want it to stay at 100 degrees the whole 21 days, not above and not below. If we had a choice between above or below, we'd rather have it a little lower than too hot. If we get to that 101, 102, we're still okay. But when we get to the 103, 104 mark in our incubator, we're pretty much done with incubation and embryology process. So it's gonna be really important that we have thermometers in our incubator to make sure that we can regulate what the temperature is going to be. So in this case, I have a digital thermometer that's available. Um, you can buy those separately, but then also the incubators come with an, a thermometer as well. So my thermometer is going to tell us exactly what temperature we're going to be at. I do not have this incubator currently plugged in right now, so um, it's not going to read our temperature that we want it at. But the way our temperature is going to be regulated is through our thermostat. And so here's a dial on top of our lid, and this is going to help regulate how hot or how cold our incubator gets. By the way, I turn this dial one way or the other. This dial is connected to a wafer, and the wafer is actually our thermostat. And it's gonna be helping to regulate how hot or how cold it is based, again, on how, wet, how much we turn that dial on top of our lid. This, ther this uh, heat wafer is going to heat this coil all the way up, and that is what's gonna make sure that our temperature is at the degrees that it needs to be at. So again, we want it to be at 100 degrees, not above and not really below. If it did get below 100 degrees, um, that's a better and safer temperature to be at. It would just mean that we may have a little later hatch in the end. The other thing that's going on in our incubator is this is actually a circulated air incubator. And that means it actually comes with a fan. And this is the fan right here in the center. It's not spinning, but if I were to plug it in right now, you would see it actually, it spins. And the nice thing about a circulated air incubator is it helps to regulate the heat throughout the incubator. So it makes sure that it's not just setting, the heat's not just coming down on one area, but it evenly distributes the heat throughout the incubator. The other thing we need to make sure it happens in our incubator, this is part of our thermometer here. We have another thermometer that we're gonna lay in there right beside the eggs, and that's gonna be real important too, kind of to monitor, make sure our thermometers are actually reading similar, similarly. The other thing too is we're gonna have an automatic egg turner. This is not a must have. Um, you can also turn the eggs by hand if you choose to do that instead. Uh, this is my kind of a teacher's best friend in my mind because it helps to make sure that the eggs are actually getting rotated when you have a busy schedule. So you're going to notice right now that the automatic egg turner is gently tilting to your left or my right. And you're going to see it leads that way for a little bit. And then over time, it's going to gently tilt them back to the center and then over again to the other side. So it just gently tilts them from side to center to side. And the purpose of that is, if we think about what our baby chicks look like when they come out of the shell, they're not cute, dry, and fluffy right away. What they are is ooey, gooey, and sticky. So by rotating our chicks while they're in the growth and development inside the shell, it's going to help make sure that our chicks actually can hatch when the time comes. If we don't rotate our eggs, our eggs or our embryos will actually stick to the inside of the shell. So when it comes time to hatch in, they won't be able to get out. So an automatic egg turner serves a wonderful purpose for our teachers as they're going through the embryology process. If you decided you didn't want to have an automatic egg turner, what you could do is you could rotate the eggs by hand three to five times a day. And we can talk about that another time. The other thing we're going to have in the bottom of our incubator is this plastic rack. There's either plastic or metal typically, but the rack is just going to be what our egg turner is going to sit on top of to make sure that everything's in position. But what's really important too is what's gonna happen in the bottom of our incubator. And that is this thing. This is actually a water, uh, water channels and that's gonna be important for the humidity that we put in our incubator. So those of you that aren't familiar, the students aren't familiar with humidity is, humidity is moisture in our air. And we're gonna be creating that with the heat in the incubator of 100 degrees and then adding water. So if you think about a hot summer day in the Midwest, we think about humidity, at least I do. And so the air feels thicker and, and damper. And so we wanna create that same kind of atmosphere inside our incubator. And the reason for that is if we just had uh, the heat blasting down on our eggs for 21 days, the shells of our eggs are gonna to get too dry and too brittle. 
and when it comes down again to times for the chicks to hatch, the shell is going to be too hard for the chicks to actually crack through the shell. So by adding water in our incubator, we're going to make sure that we're creating humidity. Now everyone should make sure that they check what their incubator says that they should be doing. For this incubator, for the first 18 days, we are going to fill up just channel number one. And so for 21, for 21 days, we're going to make sure that that channel is filled all the time. And then when we get closer to day 18, we're going to do something different to make sure our incubation uh, and embryology process is ready for hatching. That's all I've got for you right now, and we'll talk to you soon about some more processes that we need to do for our incubation embryology project.